Rock and roll. Uh, this song's uh, a great exercise um, for bass players, just playing really solid kind of blues bass playing, really. Um, it's quite a long song to get through. Again, either play it with plectrum or your fingers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you it with my fingers. Um, it's another one you can run through using the plectrum as well for practice. Um, it is basically a straight blues. It's a blues, um, a blues progression, but what happens is uh, John Paul Jones picks up on a few of the little licks. Well, he kind of locks in with, um, with the licks the guitar player plays, Jimmy Page plays. Um, and that's roughly how, how it is. It's really just a discipline in playing very, very good, solid bass playing, you know, good, solid bass line. Because if you're in a three piece as a band, yeah, from a bass playing point of view, you really just have to be rock solid with the stuff, make it feel good. And um, this is generally what John Paul Jones does with this track. The, the track starts with a, a kind of drums, drum intro of about four and a half bars, really. <laughs> um, and then the band are straight in with this blues, blues feel. Uh, the first section is fairly straight before the guitar starts playing this line, but what, what, what we've got is left and right hand, I'll show you, is just... So that start with, we've just got the A, but it tends to hammer on from this G. So that's three to five on your E string. So you get this. So that's for the first four bars. This hand here, I tend to either anchor my thumb on the, uh, on the precision pickup or on the back pickup, depending on which feels comfortable for you. The front, front pickup will make a slightly warmer sound. Back pickup has a slightly tighter sound. Don't know if you can hear that. Okay, uh, once, I've, once I've anchored my thumb there, it's, it's these left thing. <laughs> Right hand rather, left and right, or rather one and two. Um, good to practice this one with a drum machine or with a track, but we move across to the D for the next four for the next two bars. And then back to the A for another two bars. Then up to the E, which is the seventh fret on your A string. Two bars. Back to the A for two bars. Okay, that's kind of like the band intro, really. Then vocals come in at this point, and uh, this is where the bass starts to play a bit more what the guitar part is playing using the, it's kind of a riff really. So what we have is this, over the first four bars, it goes. So what we have there is hammer from G to A, hammer again, hammer again, then, which is G, A, G, A, G, Three five three five three, and uh, that's over the first four bars. And we've got another four bars of A, so exactly the same thing. Then we move up to the D, and it's kind of the same the same shape on the D. Which that is three five three five three C to D. And then we're back down to the A. Four bars. Up to the E. Seven on your D string, A, A string, sorry. And then we put in a passing note, which is the E flat, which is uh, six down to five on your A string. So we get this. got the stop there with a little bit of drums and vocal and then we're back in with a kind of tag section and 
John Paul Jones kind of plays down to the E at the end of the bar of the fourth bar there. And we're into verse two. Same thing. We've got eight bars of the same riff. And again. Up to the D. Four bars. A. Up to the E again. We got the dead stop. Okay, that was verse two. Then we're into another tag section which leads into the solo section. Um, I'll play that through so you get an idea of exactly how long these sections are. So we have eight bars of A. At the end of the, uh, at the, end of the eight bars of A, uh, John Paul Jones kind of plays this climb up on the bass. So we, I'll play you the last four bars of it. Two, three. Um, we start on the fifth string, the fifth fret of the E string, and um, we play this kind of major climb, really. And uh, the notes are A, C sharp, which is the fourth fret on the uh, A string, then fifth, sixth, and seventh on the A string as well. C sharp, D, D sharp, E. And uh, after that section, we've got two bars of D, we've got two bars of A, and we've got a bar, one bar of E, one bar of D, and a bar of A. Then we, the guitar comes in, even kind of, sounds like an overdub drops in there, and another guitar solo part. We've got eight bars of A, four bars of D, four bars of A, and then two bars of E. The first E section, he plays straight. And then we get on the second bar, second bar of uh, the E section, he plays this E, B, E, B thing. So we get this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And then we're back into four bars of A after the drum fill, based around the other. And we're then into verse three, which is, Basically, as the other previous verses, exactly the same format, uh, with the stop at the end. And we have another little four bar tag with a climb at the end. So we play the four bars tag, the climb being the same kind of approach as we used, as I showed you earlier, using the C sharp. Uh, then we're into the kind of rock out section, which is eight bars of A, based around the same riff. Four bars of D four bars of A, two bars of E, and then a dead stop. And that's the end of the song with the big ending on the A after the vocal. And I hope that will make sense to you. These kind of songs are just obviously based around the chord sequences more than anything else. So um, play along with this one on the playthrough and it should all make sense. Excellent. And that's rock and roll.